My name is Daryl Barnes and we're going to do a blood lecture study guide. Remember that this is a specific review for a specific class. I'm glad you're here. Keep coming back. May not cover everything in blood, obviously, but just a few things to give us an idea of how to study for our next test. Remember to study highlighted material. That's what I need you to do. Do what your teacher wants you to do. Let's talk about the blood for just a moment. Remember that the formed elements in the blood are erythrocytes, leukocytes, platelets. What part of a centrifuge blood sample would the hematocrit be? Would it be 55% or 44%? 44. Roughly 44%, thank you. What is the name of the protein in the blood which is really important to create osmotic pressure? Crickets chirping. This is called albumin. And this is the one that's important for that net filtration calculation that we did just a minute ago. It's albumin that helps create osmotic pressure. Why? Because it's too large to diffuse out. So its presence in the blood creates a sucking effect, sucking water toward the vessel itself. What is roughly the lifespan of an erythrocyte red blood cell? 100 to 120 days. If if hemoglobin has attached to carbon monoxide, what do we call it? Carbon. It is called <laughs> carboxyhemoglobin if it is attached to carbon monoxide. Here's what I'm understanding, or actually you tell me. How much more affinity does carbon monoxide have than regular oxygen? About, about 200. Let's talk about things that can affect the ability to move oxygen in the blood. What are, what are these conditions called? Anemia. Collectively called anemia. Which one is associated with not having enough iron? Iron deficiency. Iron deficiency. What about the one associated with B12 absorption? Pernicious. Pernicious. What about the one associated with blood loss? Hemolytic. Hemolytic anemia. And the one possibly caused by radiation damage to bones? A plastic. A plastic. Okay. We also understand that sickle cell disease is where the hemoglobin or the heme units kind of stick together and distort the shape of the cell. And the thing that is so amazing is that whenever capillaries go down to their smallest level, these blood vessels are going single file. And they've only got almost exactly enough room to move a single round, smooth blood vessel. You get something in there that's misshapen and all of a sudden things are getting clogged. What is the most common white blood cell by percent? Neutrophil. It is the neutrophil. Remember it has three to five lobes. It is sometimes called polymorphonuclear APMN. Which has a U-shaped nucleus? It transforms from uh, monocyte, I just said the answer, into <laughs> macrophage. Uh, so what's the name of this one again? Monocyte. Monocyte. Okay, remember macrophages go around scavenging things in the blood. This has a spherical nucleus and it produces <coughs> antibodies, part of adaptive immunity. Lymphocytes. We're talking about lymphocytes, right. Which blood component is associated with hemostasis and megakaryocytes produce these little hearts? Platelets. Platelets. By the way, they are not cells, they are cell fragments. Remember that I told you that the calcium input into the heart contractility is what causes, extends that refractory phase. But remember also that it is important in blood clotting. Thrombin catalyzes fibrig fibrinogen into what? Fibrin. fibrin. And fibrin is the insoluble element that helps to glue platelets together. What do we call the dissolution of a clot? A thrombolysis, why don't we call, why don't we say that? In relation to clotting, prostacyclin, heparin, sulfate, warfarin. What about these? They're all kind of anti-clot or clot prohibitive chemicals. Thank you. If a clot is a thrombus, what do we call a dislodged clot? It is a thromboembolus. This can result in deep vein thrombosis, pulmonary embolism, strokes, myocardial infarctions. If something agglutinates the blood, what has happened to the blood? It has clumped. What is another word for an antibody which can agglutinate blood? 
everyone say agglutinin. Yes. What what do we call it when the mother's body attacks the Rh positive baby, the fetus? It's a big long word for it. Erythroblastosis. The erythroblastosis fetalis. Okay, good deal. That's not a good deal, but you did good on that. All right, let's talk about different blood types. Remember, A has A antigens and anti-B antibodies. What about AB blood? What antigenic markers does AB blood have? A and B. A and B. Does it have antibodies to A and B? No. No, because that would mean it would attack itself, right? What about type O blood? Does type O blood, o blood have any antigenic markers? No. None. But it has antibodies to what? A and B. A and B. And I've been thinking about this. I've heard some one person say that O is the most ancient blood type. So I'm thinking if it's the most ancient blood type, it doesn't have antigenic markers to A or B. How does it have antibodies to A and B? If it's the oldest. Then I looked in another side. The other side said that type A is the oldest but that still leaves us with the quandary of how does O have an antibody to B? I think B was a more recent blood type. Anyhow, interesting to check in on that. O positive is the most common blood type, roughly 38%. What is the least common at 1%? AB negative. AB negative. Okay, very nice. Remember to keep coming back, subscribe, like, comment, and share your Comments are cherished on YouTube. That is what creates a community on YouTube.